Before we think about what we want to grow, we need to think about preparation of the soil. The soil, that six inches of soil, we all live and fall by as a planet. And we've really, really got to look after that. And for years and years, particularly in larger farming industry, we've been poisoning that soil and then fertilizing that soil to grow our crops. When it's on your allotment and in your own garden space and communities, you've got a real opportunity here to garden organically and garden for the planet and for nature and still get great yields of crops. So here in Sherwood, we're on really poor soil. So despite me mulching and feeding this soil with our own compost for the last couple of years, we're still on very sandy soil. We call it castle sand, you know, coming from the castle in, in the city. We're all on that sandstone base around here in Sherwood, or most of us are. So feeding that soil with our compost is the number one thing you can do. So you could be making your own compost. We've got them in, in larger pallet bays, but you can also use the, I call them Daleks, those sort of black cones that you can get that people are giving away on free cycle all the time. Make some compost, you need carbon, nitrogen, air and water. And your carbon mainly will come from cardboard because you can't really create enough carbon in an allotment or in a garden space for us to be able to turn over and make compost. Greens is all your cuttings, all your prunings, all the veg peelings from home. Anything when you, you say your broccoli is blown over, you can be using that. Uh, water and then keeping them open if possible, keep the lid off them and aerating it, turning it over. So when you've made that compost, you can heavily mulch your beds with that. And by mulching, we simply mean putting a really generous layer of compost on the top. That suppresses the weeds. You don't need to dig it in because the worms will come and pull that down and do that for you. And the more we dig into our soil, the more we're destroying the microorganisms that are in there that exist within the soil. So your dads and granddads and, and may well tell you that that double dig method is what they've done for years and years and years and indeed my dad did um, but actually leaving that soil and layering that soil they call it the no dig approach or the low dig approach means that you're adding all those nutrients back in and those worms and those slugs and those microorganisms are coming in and taking that down into the soil it's a good idea to put a big thick layer of cardboard down that will suppress the weed reduce the light which will stop the weeds growing and then put your mulch on top so when you've got your beds really healthy, you've got some good soil on it. If it's your first year, you can buy that in. You can only buy peat-free compost now, which is an absolute fantastic win. But you could buy uh, well-rotted manure, but make sure that is well-rotted because otherwise you can add far too much nitrogen to your beds. Well-rotted manure, leaves, your own compost, prepared compost mulch from supermarkets or, or, or garden centres is also good. And then you need to think about what you want to grow. So the most important thing is what do you enjoy eating uh, and how much time do you have to grow and look after these plants? So I run a garden business, so uh, I love gardening, but actually my time to spend on my allotment is quite restricted and I'm doing it all week. So, so we as a family want quite a low maintenance approach to it. So we grow a lot of fruit. So we've got raspberries. Rhubarb is a fantastic, easy win. You can buy a rhubarb plant from a decent nursery or garden centre for seven or eight quid, and that will give you rhubarb for years to come. You dig a hole, put a bit of well-rotted compost and manure in, pop your rhubarb in. Don't eat it the first year, but the second year, you will be getting lots and lots of rhubarb, and they're on and year out from there in, with very little maintenance. Your currants, again, very little maintenance once they're in the ground. They very much look after themselves, only need pruning every two or three years. Raspberries are a great winner and a great producer. Strawberries are a great producer of fruit and actually reasonably low maintenance. So think about what you want to use the space for, how much time you've got and what you like to eat. And then how much that might cost to buy an equivalent. So rare and unusuals is always quite interesting so although anything you grow in your own garden by yourself will taste so much nicer it's going to be organic it's going to be pesticide free it's going to be local you know you can be eating it within 10 minutes sometimes you could eat it on the plot while you're there things like peas and strawberries if you've got little kids but think about stuff that's unusual that you can't easily get 
uh, and then give those a go and try those. And then think about what your staples might be. So it might be peas, carrots, potatoes, and allocate those to those different spaces. Work out how much you might eat, how much you need, how easy it is to store it. And that will give you a sense of what you want to grow and start to give you a sense of how to plan for your space. Mm -hmm.